This is why your legs feel weaker after 60. Are you frustrated by that feeling of your own legs betraying you, that sudden realization that getting up from a chair, climbing a flight of stairs, or even just keeping your balance feels like a monumental task? You are not alone. It's a disconcerting, often silent battle that countless people start to face after their 60th birthday. It's the feeling that your foundation is slowly getting weaker, and it can be terrifying. For many, it starts subtly, a little more effort here, a bit of unsteadiness there. But this creeping weakness isn't just a normal part of getting older that you have to accept. It's a specific condition with a name and more importantly, with solutions. What if I told you that much of this weakness is not only preventable, but in many cases, reversible? Stick with me because over the next few minutes, I'm going to unpack the science behind why your legs feel weaker and lay out a clear, actionable blueprint to reclaim your strength and confidence. This isn't about just getting by, it's about getting your power back. But here's the twist. The primary culprit isn't just your muscles themselves, it's a far more complex process that begins decades earlier. The core of the problem for many is a condition called sarcopenia, which is the age-related involuntary loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength. It's a natural process that can begin as early as your 30s, where you might lose 3 to 5% of your muscle mass per decade. However, this process accelerates significantly after the age of 60, and for some, as much as 50% of muscle mass can be lost by the time they reach their 80s. Sarcopenia is what makes everyday activities feel progressively harder and is a major factor in increased frailty, life-altering falls, and fractures. The condition doesn't discriminate, affecting both men and women, and its prevalence jumps from about 10-20% in those over 60 to as high as 50% in people over 80. This isn't just about feeling a bit weaker, it's a critical health issue that can drastically diminish your quality of life and independence. But wait until you see what happens next. This muscle loss isn't happening in a vacuum, it's being driven by a perfect storm of biological changes. The very communication system between your brain and your muscles starts to break down. A huge piece of this puzzle lies within our nervous system. With age, there's a progressive loss of motor neurons, the specialized nerve cells that send signals from your brain to your muscles, commanding them to contract. When these motor neurons are lost, the muscle fibers they control are left without instructions, leading to a decrease in both muscle fiber number and size. Think of it like a light switch that's been disconnected. The bulb is fine, but it has no power source. Your body tries to compensate by having the remaining motor neurons sprout new connections to rescue these orphaned muscle fibers. But this re process isn't always successful, leading to a net loss of functional muscle tissue. This neurological decline is a key reason why strength diminishes with age. On top of that, other neurological conditions can also play a role. Peripheral neuropathy, which is damage to the nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord, is another common cause of leg weakness, often stemming from conditions like diabetes or even vitamin deficiencies. It can cause not just weakness, but also numbness and pain, further complicating mobility. Comment, yes, if you've experienced any strange tingling or numbness in your legs, it's more common than you think. Then there's the hormonal symphony playing in the background, which starts to sound a little off key as we age. For men, testosterone levels, a powerful hormone for building and maintaining muscle, naturally begin to decline by about 1% to 2% each year, starting around age 40. This drop accelerates after 60, making it significantly harder to hold on to muscle mass. For women, the dramatic drop in estrogen during menopause plays a surprisingly crucial role. Estrogen is vital for muscle repair and the health of muscle stem cells, known as satellite cells. When estrogen levels plummet, these satellite cells can begin to self-destruct, impairing the muscle's ability to heal and rebuild, contributing directly to sarcopenia. Furthermore, our bodies become less efficient at producing and utilizing key growth factors and hormones that are essential for muscle synthesis. The very building blocks your body needs are in shorter supply, and the instructions to use them are becoming garbled. So even if you're doing some exercise, you might not be getting the same muscle building bang for your buck that you did in your younger years. But the real secret comes at the six minute mark where I'll reveal how you can kickstart your body's muscle building machinery 
no matter your age. It's clear that a sedentary lifestyle is a massive contributor. The less you use your muscles, the weaker they become, creating a dangerous downward spiral of inactivity leading to more weakness, which in turn leads to even less activity. Chronic diseases like arthritis, cardiovascular issues, and COPD can also dramatically impact leg strength by causing pain that discourages movement or by affecting circulation and overall physical capacity. And we cannot ignore the foundation of all bodily function, nutrition. As we get older, our bodies may not absorb nutrients as efficiently and our appetite can decrease. Inadequate intake of protein is a massive problem as protein provides the essential amino acids needed for muscle repair and growth. Deficiencies in key nutrients like vitamin D, which is critical for muscle function, and calcium are also very common and directly contribute to both muscle and bone weakness. It's a multifaceted problem that seems daunting, but understanding these interconnected causes is the first step toward dismantling them. Don't skip ahead. The game-changing tip comes at 8.30, and it's something your doctor probably hasn't told you. Now let's pivot from the problem to the promise. For the next 70% of this video, we're diving into the solutions powerful, actionable strategies to fight back against leg weakness and rebuild your foundation. Remember, the goal here isn't just to stop the decline, it's to reverse it. The single most effective weapon in your arsenal against sarcopenia is resistance training. This doesn't mean you need to become a competitive power lifter. It's about challenging your muscles to work against a force which stimulates muscle protein synthesis, the process of building new muscle tissue. Research has proven time and again that engaging in strength training two to three times per week can dramatically combat falls, frailty, and the progression of sarcopenia itself. Think of it as sending a direct signal to your body. I need these muscles, build them stronger. But most people miss step number one here. I'll explain why. They think it has to be all or nothing. Let's start with the most accessible and effective exercises you can do right in your own home. One of the absolute best is the chair squat. This simple movement strengthens your thighs, hips, and glutes, which are all crucial for walking, climbing stairs, and getting up from a seated position. To perform it, stand in front of a sturdy chair with your feet hip width apart. Slowly lower your body as if you're about to sit down, just barely touching the chair before standing back up. The key is to control the movement using your leg muscles rather than momentum. Aim for 10, 15 repetitions. Try this now and see what happens. Place your hands on your thighs as you do it. Do you feel those muscles working? That's the feeling of rebuilding your strength. If you find this challenging, you can start by actually sitting down fully and then focusing on standing up without using your hands for support. As you get stronger, you can progress to just tapping the chair. Next up are calf raises, an often overlooked but vital exercise for balance and walking. Strong calves provide the push-off you need with every step. Stand behind a chair or countertop for support with your feet hip-width apart. Slowly rise onto the balls of your feet, lifting your heels as high as you can. Hold for a moment at the top, then slowly lower your heels back down. The slow, controlled lowering the eccentric part of the movement, is just as important as the lifting. Try to perform two sets of 15 repetitions. And for those with weaker legs, seated marches are a fantastic starting point. While sitting tall in a chair, simply lift one knee up as if you're marching, then lower it and repeat with the other leg. This targets the hip flexors and quadriceps in a safe, low impact way. Don't make the common mistake of just flopping your feet up and down. Be deliberate with each lift. As you build a base level of strength, you can start to incorporate more dynamic movements like stationary lunges. Lunges are incredible for building single leg strength, which is essential for balance and stability during walking. Stand with your feet together, then take a large step forward with one leg. Lower your body until both knees are bent at a 90 degree angle, making sure your front knee doesn't go past your toes. Then push off your front foot to return to the starting position. Because your feet stay in place during a stationary lunge, it's much more knee-friendly than a walking lunge. Hold on to a chair for balance. 
it's better to do a shallow lunge with perfect form than a deep wobbly one. Now let's compare two fantastic options for adding resistance. Resistance bands versus lightweights. Resistance bands are portable, inexpensive, and provide variable resistance, meaning the tension increases as you stretch them. This is great for challenging muscles through their full range of motion. A great band exercise is the resistance band leg press. While seated, loop a band around one foot, holding the ends in your hands. Push your foot forward against the band's resistance, extending your leg fully, then slowly return to the start. Light dumbbells, on the other hand, offer constant resistance, holding light weights from two to five pounds, while doing your squats or lunges can significantly increase the challenge and the muscle building stimulus. Research actually shows that lifting lighter weights for more repetitions can be just as, and sometimes more, effective for building muscle than lifting very heavy weights. Option A, bands, is great for travel and for people with joint pain, while option B, weights, is excellent for progressively increasing the load in a very measurable way. There's no single best answer. The key is choosing the one you'll do consistently. Comment bands or weights to let me know which you prefer. Let's talk troubleshooting. What if you experience knee pain during squats? A common cause is letting your knees drift forward over your toes. Instead, focus on hinging at your hips and sending your backside backward as if sitting in a chair far behind you. You can also place a stability ball between your back and a wall to help guide your form and support your lower back. What if your balance feels too shaky for lunges? Start by holding onto a sturdy surface with both hands and only go as low as you feel stable. Over time, as your strength and balance improve, you can progress to holding on with one hand then just fingertips, and eventually, no hands at all. Consistency trumps intensity every time. The goal is to finish each session feeling energized, not exhausted or in pain. Remember to listen to your body and adjust. Of course, exercise is only half of the equation. You cannot out-train a bad diet. To rebuild muscle, you absolutely must provide your body with the right raw materials, and the most important is protein. As we age, our bodies experience anabolic resistance, meaning we need more protein to stimulate the same amount of muscle growth as a younger person. Aim to consume 25 to 35 grams of high quality protein with each meal. Excellent sources include lean meats like chicken and fish, eggs, dairy products like Greek yogurt and cottage cheese, and plant-based options like tofu, lentils, and beans. Fatty fish like salmon is a double win providing both high-quality protein and anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids, which can help reduce muscle breakdown. Most people miss step number three of nutrition. They don't spread their protein intake throughout the day. A huge steak at dinner won't make up for a low-protein breakfast and lunch. Your muscles need a steady supply. Let's dive deeper into some key micronutrients that are your muscles' best friends. Vitamin D is essential for muscle function and strength, and deficiency is rampant among older adults, directly increasing the risk of falls. Sunlight is a primary source, but many people, especially in colder climates, may need a supplement. Talk to your doctor about getting your levels checked. Calcium and magnesium are also critical, not just for bone health, but for proper muscle contraction and nerve function. And don't forget B vitamins, particularly B12, which supports nerve function and energy production, both vital for muscle health. You can find these nutrients in a balanced diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, but if you have a chronic condition or dietary restrictions, supplementation might be necessary. Here's an unexpected case study for you. A study looked at a group of adults over 65 who engaged in a simple progressive resistance training program three times a week. After just 12 weeks, they not only saw significant increases in leg strength and muscle mass, but they also reported dramatic improvements in their ability to perform daily activities. They walked faster, climbed stairs more easily, and had more confidence. The most inspiring part, many of them had been sedentary for years, believing their weakness was an unchangeable fact of life. This proves that it is never too late to make a change. The body has a remarkable capacity to adapt and grow stronger at any age, provided you give it the right stimulus. Think about a real-world example. A grandfather who was once unable to lift his grandchild now can, all because he started with simple chair squats and calf raises and gradually progressed. 
That's the power we're talking about. Don't forget the power of simple, consistent movement outside of your structured workouts. Activities like walking, gardening, and even household chores contribute to keeping your muscles active and your circulation flowing. Regular walking is a fantastic, low-impact way to improve cardiovascular health and prevent sarcopenia. Even short 10-minute walks throughout the day can make a huge difference. If you have a desk job or find yourself sitting for long periods, set a timer to get up and move around every 30 minutes. This combats the muscle atrophy that comes from being sedentary. Every step you take is a vote for stronger legs. The goal is to build a lifestyle of movement, not just a schedule of workouts. Now, as we approach the end, I want you to feel empowered, not overwhelmed. You don't have to implement all of these strategies overnight. Start with one thing. Maybe it's doing 10 chair squats every single day, or perhaps it's focusing on adding a quality source of protein to your breakfast. Small, consistent actions build momentum and create lasting habits. Pick one thing from this video that you can commit to starting tomorrow. That is your first step on the path to reclaiming your strength. Remember, your legs have carried you through your entire life. It's time to give them the care and attention they need to carry you strongly and confidently into the future. You have the knowledge. You have the tools. Now, it's time for action. Save this guide. There was a lot of information here. Save this video to your watch list so you can come back and review the step-by-step -step exercise instructions and nutritional tips whenever you need a refresher. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because in my next video, I'll be revealing the number one mental trick to staying motivated with exercise after 60 and you won't want to miss it.